total hospitalization rate is down a tick, which is good news. The uh, change in hospitalization on a rolling total you see is down. Number of intubations is also down. The number of COVID hospitalizations per day, these are new people who are newly diagnosed with COVID. Uh, it's under 1,000, which is good news. It's still a significant number of people, 900 people. After all of this, we still have 900 new infections yesterday uh, on a three-day rolling average. But overall, you see the numbers coming down. So that's good news. This is the worst news uh, every day. I think maybe today is the day the nightmare will be over, but it's not. 335 uh, people passed away yesterday from this virus in this state. That's 335 families. You see this number is basically reducing, but not at a tremendous rate. First point, don't overwhelm the hospital system. If the hospital system in an area exceeds 70% capacity, which means you're 30%, uh, you only have 30% left, or the rate of transmission of the virus hits 1.1, those are danger signs. We CDC set guidelines as to reopening for states. We think those CDC guidelines make sense which is you have to have a 14-day decline in the number of hospitalizations before you go forward. Second, identify industries that you can start reopening that will bring people back to work, get the economy going, but you know you can do the appropriate precautions and social distancing. Only 20,000 were infected and hospitalized. How could they be so wrong? They weren't wrong. We changed reality. The differential, the variance, is what we did. It's the close down. It's wearing masks. It's all of that. We reduced the rate. We so-called flattened the curve, flattened the curve. Uh, well, that meant 100,000 fewer New Yorkers didn't get seriously ill, didn't go into a hospital, didn't overwhelm the hospital system. Uh, and a percentage of those people who got seriously ill would have passed away. So we literally saved lives. We can't now negate everything that we accomplished. We have to do the opposite. We have to take this experience, and we have to learn and grow from the experience. And we have to build back better than before. This exposed a lot of issues, fundamental issues. We have to do a better job on teleeducation, remote learning. Sounds great. But you have to have all the equipment. People have to be trained and teachers have to be trained. We jumped into it. We have to do a better job. We have to do a better job on telemedicine. Not everybody has to show up at the doctor's office. You can do a better job. We have to do a better job on our basic public health system. I would bank that this happens again. And is the same thing going to happen again? I hope not. Do we have a tracing system in place? Mayor Bloomberg is helping us organize this. It's never been done before. Uh, nobody ever heard of tracing to this extent. But tracing is, once a person says they're positive, you trace their contacts back. You notify people. You test people. That's a whole different op uh, operation. Uh, the current recommendation is you need at least 30 tracers per 100,000 people. So we have to have that in place. You have to have isolation facilities in place. Uh, isolation facilities are when someone gets sick, you know they're positive, and uh, they don't want to go home to quarantine because if they go home, they could infect their family, which is what's happening now, a lot of these new cases. Uh, so we have to have a facility where somebody who is positive can quarantine for the two weeks without going home. And we have to identify them now. The estimate is 30 tracers for every 100,000 people. 
So that's a data point. That's what it means to have tracing in place. Uh, 